G'day, I am Alastair Christie, and I am here to introduce to you my new video on building Delphi applications using the Visual Component Library. This video is designed as an introduction to the VCL, so if you are already an expert, this might not be something you want to buy. Now, it only takes one good idea or concept to make your purchase worthwhile, so you may still want to get it. If you're getting started with Delphi, then this video is for you. Uh, and you'll want to uh, get it now by going to my website, learndelphi.tv, and clicking the Buy Now link. I have prepared for you a five-minute cross-section of random bits from the video, uh, which you can watch now. When you get a new language, usually the first thing you want to do is be able to print um, Hello World at the console. So um, let's start with that. So we need to make a console application. So we get File, New, and in other, uh, under Delphi projects, there's a console application. Now, um, basically, let's remove the to-do bit. We just go right lin, hello world. And if I run that, okay, so style. So at the moment, I've got a push button. Um, I could also make command link. And if we scroll back up, we can see there's this command link hint. And that adds, adds that to the, um, the button. And otherwise it just works as before. We probably need to go into. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another list box and in the on click um, I'm going to start by clearing the existing list box uh, for I is assigned 0 to list box 1 dot count minus one. And if this box one dot selected I we want to add that add um So we are just adding the selected item into, and I'll just show you how it works basically. So when we have something selected, and if I hold down control, um, so it works. And that's about all that's of interest, although I can turn word wrap on and say um, caption. is a really, really long checkbox caption. And also, um, alignment is uh, a bit more interesting in that we can say, we've only got left and right, there's no center. And if I set it to left, the checkbox is on the other side. So throw a label on there, uh, grab and edit. size that to where I wanted initially. A memo. And we'll grab two buttons. Okay, so our label, uh, I'll also anchor that to the right. And our memo in all directions. And I'll select both of those. Oops and anchor them to the bottom right. So when we run this and I resize it, um, the buttons stay at the bottom and the memo gets bigger and the, the uh, edit uh, you know, stay, always stays uh, full width of the form. 
so you know if you're writing a little uh, I don't know, saving a memo or you know description and a blog post thing or something I don't know so that's that's currently on a panel let's shift this bit button oops onto panel 5 and delete that we could align that to right come down to the margins well turn the line with margins on and um, so three pixels might 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 be perfect and then we can adjust the the height of the panel to to suit the uh, the button size we want so that's um dropping dragging and dropping a list box uh, between itself um, we will probably want but well, we need to be a bit more sophisticated about that um, so let's add a second list box and line that up and make them the same size and let's be able to drag from this list box to um, this one okay through our frame on that's if our hello okay and we can run this type in our name Goes, hello Alistair. So if we look at the uh, the source code, uh, in fact we'll see that there's basically no no code. Uh, the only thing that's been added is the if our hello. And if I go view as text, we'll see I've got this inline directive uh, and it's added the if our hello. And you'll notice there's no no button or label or edit mentioned here. Um, however, if I shifted the same name button to there and up a little bit and then had a look at view as text um, we've now got an inherited uh, say name button and it's got uh, a new position new left and top so we get alt f12 um, but say that was a mistake shifting that I can right click and go revert to inherited in the cells so the bit off to the left we could you know we could add a space or something like that to kind of get them approximately right but um, we'll, uh, we'll make it uh, perfect um, so what we need to do is um, turn off default drawing and if I run that now we get a blank canvas and uh, to um, to make something display we need to override on draw cell a fairly nicely formatted uh, and coloured um, periodic chart of the elements. Now one more thing I want to do is um, show which, which uh, cell is selected, which element is currently selected. So I'm going to say if um, so we bring up the help on the uh, grid draw state and we'll see it's a, a set of these things and the one I'm interested in is selected so I'm just going to copy that and I go if selected in state we want a different color uh, the CL highlight I was using before There we've got um, hide. Oh, we've still got editing turned on, which we should probably disable um, in the installer output. We have periodic table setup.exe, and I can run that and install it and launch it. And you'll notice that it's actually the older version of. Um, our periodic table. Now this is because we did not compile, we've been compiling our debug version uh, so I need to do a release version. Thanks for watching this preview, I hope it has inspired you to purchase the full video. I am Alistair Christie and this is goodbye from me, so until next time, bye now.